So it is Sunday. It's Journal 6. Um, this was my first week with uh, football, doing clinical experience with football. Um, I got a lot of hours because football needs, there are so many of them that treatment times and pre-practice and post-practice are so much longer because their team is huge. But um, the question is, does what you have learned in modalities parallel what you experienced during clinical experience? I would say yes and no. Yes, because most of the time that I see um, or when I have to hook someone up for STEM, it's for pain, so IFC or inferential or pre-mod. Um, I don't see, I would say no also because we don't see a lot for strengthening and um, stuff like that. Like we don't do Russian usually. Um, I haven't seen anyone use TENS units, but I don't think we do that here much anyways. Yes, we have them on site, um, but we, I haven't seen a lot of um, driving in medications with STEM, with the electrical currents. Um, I probably haven't been here long enough to see that, for that to be the case where we need to use it. So that would probably happen, maybe, <laughs> but I haven't seen it. So yes, I know how to set up SIM for IFC and pre-mod, so that's really fun because um, now I don't have to ask what to turn it up to and what the all the settings and like the phases and stuff like that I don't have to ask any longer I can do it by myself I just they come in and they say to the preceptor that um, they're in pain somewhere um, this week we saw a lot of Backs, I hooked up, yes. I have C to the lower back, um, the knee, and someone's quad, I believe. Um, so they would sit down and I would have to hook them up, turn it up till they feel it, um, Usually treatment time is 15 to 20 minutes depending on how much time they had. So in one instance it was right before practice. So uh, we only had 15 minutes. Um, but another time it was treatment time for the athlete. So we had the full time. So that was good. Um, I so I saw a lot of IFC and pre-mod, and that was about it this week. Um, I didn't see really any other types of STEM this week. Um, but I had to clinically experience the football game yesterday. It was home. This is my first football game as an athletic training student, so I was excited. Um, there were... Lots of instances where we had to go out on the field and stop play. We had to stop play and um, go out on the field to an assistant athlete or to um, see if they could get up. If not, you know. Um, so we had a lot of turf burn, a lot of bleeding. Um, face masks hitting someone's face masks uh, hitting, you know, arms and stuff like that when they go to push, when they go to block. Um, 
So in the beginning of the game, I did a lot of, you know, gloves on and cleaning and covering so they could go back out next play. Um, but then I would say it was before halftime. Um, player went down on the other team not Emery and uh, he didn't really show that he was in a lot of pain but the injury was not good we had used a vacuum splint um, we checked it was injury to the leg um, we checked the pulse below the injury um, we put a vacuum splint on him we got the spawn board just to kind of stabilize to get him in the back of the gator to transport him to the ambulance. So that took probably, I'd say five minutes, which is pretty good for splinting and moving and all that and bringing the gator out on the field and loading the gator, loading the athlete into the gator, getting them off the field to resume play. Um, I didn't realize if, like, someone went down and athletic trainers were on the field that the coaches would send out people for the next play. You know, I would think that they would see people, you know, see us out there in our shirts and, um, around a specific player that they would hold off for a second. Um, we got a lot of, can you move this person off the field so we can keep playing from the refs, which was kind of surprising. Like, I know you have other places to be, but at this moment, you are being paid to ref this game. Um, but our, you know, response time was good. I think that, you know, Cole, the certified athletic trainer, ATC went out there with uh, the other teams, brought their athletic trainers as well. Um, so we were out there, and we had the uh, splint bag, and Cole and Joan splinted him. And then Meg had to get the spine board, and then we went to go get the gator, and... We brought the gator out on the field, and we helped load him into the back of the gator, and we had to drive him out. Um, so I have never seen anyone actually get splinted and carried off the field like that. It was surprising that he was not in a lot of pain. At first, we suspected a break, um, but I think our um, consensus was a... Um, knee dislocation which when it comes to mind you would think that the athlete would be in a lot of pain but there was everyone took a knee which was really really respectful and when we loaded him um, the players on our team came and um, were sending him off with a uh, good luck and good job and sorry the injury and stuff like that which is really sweet um and then after that a player went down after halftime for the other team and apparently his shoulder subluxes a lot um so he didn't get i don't i think he got brushed I don't think he got full ta fully tackled. He just kind of got, like, shouldered, and he was not able to get up. So we didn't go out on the field for that, but we held our players um, to, on the sideline while their athletic trainers came out and uh, assisted him and took him off the field. Uh, they didn't need our help. Um, and then uh, fourth quarter... There was one of our players led with his head and his, I 
believe he took his cheek pads out of his helmet, which is not what they were supposed to do. Um, they took He took his cheek pads out of his helmet, I believe, when I saw him take his helmet off, um, that he didn't have any cheek pads, so the helmet slid when he went in head first. Um, so the top of his face mask hit the right here, I guess like, yeah, middle of the forehead, and also came down and hit him in the, like, right here where the nose, um, where the skin, like, does this, um, and he continued to play, not good, um, he came off, they called a timeout, we were taking off the helmet, cleaning, we put, um, Vaseline, I believe, on there to try to stop the bleeding. Um, but he was clean when he went back in, and then he led with his head once again and came out, and his nose was bleeding that time. So we had nose plugs. We had um, Vaseline on his face trying to get the bleeding to stop. Um, he went in for the very last play. Um, not the very last, but... He got the touchdown, and then he, we brought him off. Um, so, a lot of wound care, again. Um, there was another instance where um, an athlete was tackled from the feet and from the head by two, two different players. His helmet came off. He was kind of like... Uh, I guess like bent two different ways but he did not have any pain from that he had more pain from his toes being bent back um, and his ankle being twisted um, he we taped his ankle we went back he went back out and then came out again complaining of uh, bottom of the foot big toe pain so more on the flexors I think it was more of a like a muscular thing not we didn't find any like bony deformities or anything like that um he didn't have really any pain with his uh last four toes mostly with the great toe um but I think that me being on the field during all of this was a great experience because I haven't, I've clinically experienced a volleyball game and a couple of volleyball games and nothing really happens like that. Um, so getting to see all the wound care and, you know, the real injuries not saying that volleyball doesn't have any real injuries, but um, football is a contact sport, so there's a lot more um, injuries involved when it comes to being padded up and, you know, running with all your force at someone and tackling someone so they don't get a touchdown. Um, I think that these instances will influence my future clinical actions because now I know how quick you have to be um, when things happen especially with players that are you know in and out and in and out um, all the time on I was on offense so yeah when defense is playing you have time to treat them but when offense is on they come out for you know, one play, and that's all the time that you have, and plays do not last that long, so you have to be quick and on your game, um, or, I mean, they're just gonna get up and go, because they have to go back on the field, because their coach is calling them, um, I think it, I taped some ankles yesterday as well, so that will definitely help me towards my clinical goal, one of them being, you know, sport-specific taping, um, especially with linemen. 
They want, like, pretty much the whole roll of tape. They want stability. You know, if they get pushed off the line, they don't want their ankle to roll or twist or anything like that. They want to be so stable. Um, so definitely learning how most of them want their ankle tape will help me with my one of my goals. Also, you know, they really do – the football team really does respect – athletic trainers, so, um, knowing that they don't take us for granted and are very polite, uh, knowing that I can ask, you know, I can mess up if I do, you know, I'm still learning, um, and so that will definitely help me build my confidence, which is one of my goals, so, this coming up week is fall break. I am staying because of uh, soccer. And so I plan to work, uh, work on my clinical question and um, starting to get research started with that. But I plan to be clinically experiencing football practice this week. Um, I have a game when they go away next weekend, which is unfortunate because I would love to have the experience to travel with them and be in that um, atmosphere. But we will see how it goes, and I will see you next week for Journal 7.